In today's video, man, I'm talking about the number one question that I get asked. I get asked this question almost weekly by people that call themselves Christians. Let's talk about it. Shalom. Thank you for tuning in to another Righteous Spiritful episode. Today I'm back at it in them trenches handling that kingdom business. Man, me and my family have been living on our homestead for going on three years now. And it has not been easy, but it has been worthwhile. And there are continual lessons to be learned. Every year, that you take part uh, trying to live to the best of your ability an agricultural lifestyle, you know, a do-it-yourself lifestyle, you're gonna learn so much. And the number one question I get, I get asked uh, by people coming to drop off their dogs, you know, for our, for our, uh, our business. And they ask, man, we saw on your website uh, your website says you're closed on Saturday uh, for the Sabbath. People ask, man, what kind of religion are you? What, 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 what kind of church do you go to? You know, what, what denomination of Christianity is this? Okay, I even get it on the phone when people are calling trying to book reservations for their dogs. Oh, we see you guys is closed on Saturday. Are you, you, you part of this and part of that? And it, it's the most far-fetched stuff they come up with. When people are dropping off their dogs and they're pulling up and I'm in the middle of building something, I'm in the building of planting, pruning uh, fruit trees and vegetables and, you know, just working the land. People are always curious said, man, I ain't never seen black people that live like this. What made you want to farm and, and, and do all this? And I tell you this, before we lived on a homestead, I couldn't see it. There were certain things biblically that I couldn't see because I wasn't striving to live what's in the book. Now here's the shocker. Man, I've got pastors, preachers, elders, all of that in the family. Some of them have churches and it always shocks me that they've been doing this stuff. They've been in ministry, some of them 20, 30, 40 years. And then they ask me, man, what made you wanted to grow your own food? What made you wanted to get uh, goats and sheep? What makes you want to, uh, you know, go out there and raise meat chickens and egg chickens and you know what makes you want to go out there and build your own stuff and I say man it, it's all this stuff is in the Bible it's all in the Bible of an Israelite Hebraic people that are an agricultural people a laboring people the word says hate not husbandry or laborious work which the most high Yah has ordained build you houses, plant you gardens, eat thereof, live in them. You know, the problem is in religion, you are only taught that these are parables. The parable of the seed sower. See, when you start living it and worshiping in spirit and in truth, now you get to see a whole nother benefit to actually sowing seeds. You know, people are alarmed when I tell them, hey, man, this stuff is not just for your reading comprehension. This is a lifestyle. Following Messiah, following the patriarchs of the book that was counted as righteous, it is a lifestyle. It's not just about 
uh, an hour and a half of religious observance a week, people are shocked. Like I tell you, when I say uh, on the website, we're keeping the Sabbath and they want to ask questions, it is just shocking to religious people that so-called say they're following the book that uh, somebody's actually, and they ask like, what are you, 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 what, what, what religion and what, uh, is that some uh, sort of uh, uh, extent of Christianity or Judaism or, or Hindu or what kind of book? And it just blows my mind how they have been shut off from recognizing what they should actually be doing in the book. Blows my mind. Old people. Young pastors. You know, people it just man, it is a difference between the life of the righteous in the book and the Pharisees. Pharisees did a lot of lip service. They did a whole lot of lip service in order to be seen as righteous by the people. But when you are worshiping in, in spirit and in truth, walking in his his ways, his will, his laws, statutes, precepts, and judgments, now the Most High Yah can count you as righteous because you're actually doing what the remnant is supposed to do. And this is where I tell people, you need to go do the research for yourself. Me telling you that what they have you doing in religion is not biblical, won't do you any good because you haven't had to do any of the research on your own. But when somebody tells you, hey, uh, when you go back and read it for yourself, man, I can't find Christmas, I can't find none of this stuff in the book that you might be accustomed to living, now you're gonna realize that everybody, including your pastor, your church, even the religion in itself that you follow is in on the scheme to keep you lost. You know, I got people, they'll go as far as ask, uh, what scripture do you look at and all of this? And these people will say, man, I didn't read the book from front to back. My church, we got Bible reading groups where we read all 66 books from front to back and I've never seen that. And this is where you got people reading the book for vanity. See, when you're reading the book, uh, reading for fruit, to bear fruit in your life, it's stuff in there that's gonna jump out you totally different versus you just reading it to say you read it. You gotta understand, when you hear stuff like Good Shepherd, Good Shepherd ain't just like no title. It's not a title. This comes from men that were actually herdsmen, men that had sheep and goats. And it's used in an analogy format of sheep being the people. You got to look at where this stuff take, took place biblically and why, uh, you know, when you actually follow it, it's going to lead to you living a different type of, uh, different type of lifestyle. You cannot read about the storehouse uh, and think that that is the church or the grocery store. It, it's not. But we're so far removed from the biblical lifestyle and religion has allowed us to be comfortable living in deception, living in uh, stuff that's not even the truth. You know, I, I can't even imagine going back to not growing my own vegetables, not raising my own eggs, not raising my own chicken, not raising my own meat. And I'm trying to even, I'm trying to scale up the operation. I can't imagine that. You know, it was during COVID and we were going to the grocery store, man. And there was maybe one, two packs of meat on the shelf. I said, man, there's got to be a better way. Got to be a better way. And the most high y'all, you know, one day I was at work and the most high y'all said, man, you need to get up out of here. Get up out of the city. You are not gonna be able to live like I want you to live in the city. So at the next opportunity, we had to move. Man, we was up and gone, up and out of there. And the Most High Yah set up the play because he's getting the glory out of all of it. 
you know, I don't want to be uh, honored for, for you know, uh, esteemed amongst men. I'm, I'm trying to live how the book says live so you can bear the kind of fruit they was bearing. You know, there, there, nothing in the world I would trade for not having my chickens and my sons being able to go out there and bring a basket of eggs in in the morning and we, we they cook them things right on up. Having meat birds able to, uh, you know, process my own chickens with the meat plucker, you know, getting more use out of that propane tank that most people, when they was keeping heathen holidays, only used for Thanksgiving. Now, when it's time meat brought, hey, we, we, we dunking them chicken, get the feathers off of there. You know, vegetables, going out in the garden and going out there pulling off tomatoes, bell peppers of all kind of varieties, eggplants, lettuce, broccoli, fruit trees, all of this stuff, peaches, apples. I tell you, man, nowadays, you know, when I was in the city, I was focused on clothes and gear and all of that. Man, that's the last thing I'm thinking about now. This upcoming season, I'm like, man, we're going to get some pecan trees. We're going to get some different nut trees because that's just another, you know, if you got an abundance of, of, of almonds, of, of peanuts, of pecans, so many different things you can do with that. And if you don't have nothing else to eat and there ain't no meat, guess what you can do? There ain't no stuff in the store. You can survive off of this stuff. You can survive off of it and live a live a healthy life, healthier than eating this stuff in the grocery store. You know, I like the fact that, you know, I was able to get rid of a gym membership and invest in the homestead to be able to have our own gym equipment versus living in an HOA neighborhood, having all this, and you really don't have the space, you know, to have uh, amenities like this. You're not finna just turn your whole uh, backyard into a, 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 a garden in a doggone HOA neighborhood. It just ain't finna have, they ain't not finna have that. Oh, that's too much clutter back there. We moved outside of city limits. We got stuff growing galore. People showing up that have done business with us saying, man, was that here when I came the last time? Nope, we always building. Always building something. Trying to expand, trying to, uh, you know, refine the skill set. But that's the number one question I get asked by, you know, religious people, Christians, Catholics. Man, what, 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 what? What made you want to do that? Or what kind of group are you in? Are you, uh, uh, in what kind of uh, religion teaches this? And I'm saying, I got the same Bible you got. It's just, we looking for two different things in the book. We looking for two different things. Closer to y'all ministry is kicking that thing, gun barrel straight.